Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about five advanced pro tips that IGLs can use. This one's not going to be edited that much. I'm just going to be doing a verbal lesson. So you can just follow along. You just have to listen and watch the notes on screen that I'll be writing right here. Sorry about the dark camera as usual. Uh, this will be fixed in due time, but let's talk about duos, right? There's not that much to really talk about in general. Uh, prior to telling you the five tips, but I did want to point out one thing, right? I did want to point out this important detail, which is the fact that there's two main setups in duos, right? It's very simple. The first one is the IGL slash fragger setup. This is the like most commonly heard, but not necessarily the most commonly executed. So I'll explain what I mean by that. But the second one is actually like having a tarp lead and then an observer. So someone who like calls out things that they see, information um, or a follower. Right. And they just copycat like that. You can even write copycat here. Right. And that's sort of how I think about it, at least. Um, this is actually more common in duos, believe it or not. Although there are setups with pro teams and other amateur teams where people have a hard IGL and the other guy is just like doesn't make calls at all. Right. Only one person makes a call. Now, I personally believe that this is a better setup just because having two sets of eyes making calls and having both people know the game sense so that they can both make calls is a very important aspect of your duo so if you are this sort of setup where your fragger's not making calls at all i would at least you know potentially let them make a couple calls even if it's an 80 20 split or something of that sort understand that they should be able to make calls too as long as they're good calls right of course they should be capable of making good calls before they sort of transition into this setup but that's okay uh this just is letting you guys know that there's different setups here right <clears throat> Uh, personally, really important aspect. This can flip between players, right? This setup right here. What I mean by that, let's say you have like your player one and player two, and you guys are moving forward like this, right? And then zone pulls back, but not exactly back into your tarp at an angle. Now this player, like if you want to rush for it, right? You want to get ahead of zone and really make sure you're front tarp. This player will now become tarp lead, right? The roles switch. And then this person becomes observer follower. This person is more than capable of tarping because a good duo should be capable of doing everything. And then they move like this. I want your duo to have that flexibility where you can become this setup right here and highlight it. So let's just move on. I just wanted to give you guys a sort of brief on this sort of thing uh, because people don't really necessarily understand that this video could actually apply for both people in your duo. You understand? Because if you're doing this, the calls can come from both players. And it's very important to understand that you can actually use all of these tips for both players in your duo. And that's just something that I wanted to point out. So let's get into it, right? Five advanced tips for IGLs. Pretty simple. First thing, very simple, but actually really important. It sounds not that advanced, but I really want you to understand the impact that this tip has on your gameplay. And it's as simple as make it as easy as possible for your teammate to follow. You understand? Right. So when I say follow, I don't necessarily just mean physically, although that's an aspect of it. Right. When I say physically, I mean tarps. Right? I mean, the rotates that you do make it as easy as possible for your teammate to follow. That is one aspect of it. That's actually the more obvious ones. Right. But what about communication? The choice of words that you use uh, can be difficult to follow. You understand? So a really clear example of this is instead of just saying, follow me, come follow me. You could tell them exactly what you're finding to do ahead of time, right? So that the communication is very much easier to follow instead of just saying, come here or go left, right? Go left is better than come here. You understand? And sometimes they don't even know where you are. So come here is very vague. And there's examples of this, right? This is just a very simple example, but there's more examples past this where you should particularly be careful with the words you choose because they're not easy to follow when you listen to them. You understand? So it's very important to particularly like actually body view your comms, like record your games and body view your comms, because sometimes you could be making communications that is very, very difficult to follow. Um, and the other player could be doing the same. And this is something that we need to smooth out and make sure that we're doing well. Otherwise it's going to be very difficult to actually play the game as a team. And we know obviously that that's an important part of the duo playing as a team. Next thing, if you're the hard IGL, let's say you have this sort of setup, right? And you're making 90% of the calls, you best believe you better understand the game, right? Like actually understanding the game, right? And so in other words, you should be the one, right? Putting the most amount of time in the game macro wise. What do I mean by that, right? Macro wise, I'll give you some examples. So you'll, you'll understand through examples what I mean by that, because in other words, if you have 
90% of the say or 95% of the say or even 100% of the say in terms of calls, they better be good calls, right? You like your whole team's relying on this, right? And sometimes it's trios, sometimes it's duos, but any in any case, right? Your team's relying on this. So you better make the right call. In other words, macro. Like, what do I mean by macro? Surge positioning is macro, right? Circles one to five rotates is macro, right? Layering in end game is macro. Very important macro, actually. Because if you position yourself wrong in endgame, maybe you're too high and you get sprayed by high. There's just stuff like that as well. Uh, wind conditions, right? Wind conditions in, in endgame. Sometimes it goes up a hill. Like, what's your wind condition there? Yeah, you got to get up, right? And actually understanding that, you know, positioning in the prior zone because there's a potential for it to pull up a hill is an also important detail that you should take into account. Um, another thing is off spawn strategy, right? Just you're most likely going to be discussing and telling your teammate what to do in this sort of setup. You're usually the smarter player, right? And that's why you should be very, very refined in all of these things. Otherwise, your team will fail in this case. Okay, so it's very important to get this right. Okay, third tip. Because in other words, what I'm really saying here in the second tip actually is put more time into VOD reviews than you usually do. Uh, obviously, you should be good micro wise as well. Your mechanics, aim and sort of peaks, edits, all these things should be good obviously but it's important to understand that these details are actually what get you through heats and into grand finals for example this is this becomes more important in that sort of uh, environment um so get this right okay third tip talk less in general because a lot of pro teams actually do this because sometimes you're saying stuff that could be clogging up comms or clogging up audio so that your teammate can't hear important edits or pickaxes that on your wall or you know footsteps for example so only say what's important right and actually if you talk too much it sort of clouds the things that are important in other words um sometimes if you're just constantly talking 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 the important detail becomes sort of saturated right it becomes sort of left in the details um and it's really important to only talk when you need to and only talk about important details okay um another sort of way you can think about this is you know how sometimes people scream they talk about like urgency in your voice if you're if you're constantly enthusiastic about you know what's going on uh and you're constantly screaming you're constantly yelling you're constantly like come here come here come here right and it's very important to understand that that doesn't do you any good your duo is not benefiting from that and it's important to only use that urgent voice calm or urgent style when it's actually important like in my box for example as a comp if you use that in every scenario i think that would not be good for you understand so try to avoid sort of just putting urgency in every part of your game right so talk less and only put urgency in urgent situations right this is important and then in other words right like the important situations like for example, an enemy in your box, stand out in this way, right? If you constantly talk, 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 come here, come here, follow me left, right, left, right. Like it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be very difficult for your teammate to actually follow you, which goes back to, you know, this, this one, this tip right here. You have to get this right. Okay. So tip number four, let's talk about tip number four. Very important. Actually, this one's difficult, but important to understand pre-planning. I talk about pre-planning a lot uh, and it's for good reason. It's important, right? Tell your teammates what you're about to do before you do it and some other scenarios is talk about potential plans that can happen uh if x happens for example i'll give you some examples okay because this is actually pretty important uh, i want you guys to understand this examples is the best way to sort of explain this so good example is let's say you're waiting you get into static zone in other words the end zone of a moving zone the end zone the white circle of a moving zone you're waiting right you're waiting for the next moving to show while you're waiting because you have nothing else to do there's no clear impact opportunities near you and you're just waiting you're waiting like full in a metal box you're just waiting with your teammate you tell your teammate if it pulls double pull forward we're gonna take low ground Okay, that's very clear if it pulls west we have to go up right and even that actually is not even that important because if we have to go up that's more on you you understand that one's more on you because you're the tarper if you're tarping you don't need to tell your teammate you have to go up you just do it right you could tell him it could help but actually the more important calm is the one for low ground because what you're essentially telling your teammate is like if it pulls double pull forward when i say double pull forward all i mean is the moving zone pulls in the same direction as the previous moving zone we're going to take low ground right and why is that a good play because dead side is the double pull forward direction right so if it double pulls forward front side is dead side which means there's a lot of empty space on low ground that you can just drop down and cut in front of previous low ground and place ramps and walls and then take low ground for yourself you understand this is why it's important because it's a very timely action if you don't do this right then and there the opportunity is gone and you won't have low ground low ground's a win condition right 
Talked about win conditions earlier. It's a win condition to make sure that you get top two in your game, guaranteed, as long as you hold it properly. Pretty pretty simple example, but actually really important. Uh, you know, this could also happen for height, right? Height opportunities. Like in half half, you tell your teammate, like, we may go for height, just be ready for it, right? You're telling your teammate to be prepared for the call so that when the call comes, they're not surprised, they know exactly what to do, you understand? So this could be a good opportunity as well for you to clean up your gameplay and make sure you're pre-planning, telling your teammate to be on the same page. Okay, last thing, very important. This is actually probably the most important tip that I could offer you guys, honestly, is to be decisive, right? Really important. Uh, if you can't be decisive, it's going to be very, 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 very difficult to do well in this meta, honestly. SMG spray makes things way more fast paced than possible. It's often better, right? This, this is the detail that I really want you to understand, okay? Understand that making the third or fourth best decision in any given situation with confidence here right in any given situation is often better than making the best possible play with self doubt okay now this is something that a lot of people don't understand people think fortnite is chess people think that if you make the wrong move you're dead this is not necessarily true uh actually it's more about how you execute certain plans right than it is about you know, because you see people landing on height when it makes no sense to land on height. You see people doing stuff that you've never seen before. And these are pro teams, dude. It's just they're confident about the play. They execute on it. And they're very convinced that this is the right play. Right? So oftentimes, it's better to make a decision in a lower amount of time, especially in endgame. than it is to wait, hesitate, get yourself killed, and then be like, oh, I know what to do now. Right? Not No point. No point. Not, not at all. And oftentimes staying ahead and staying like, you know, front side is an, an important detail in duos. And it's important to understand that if you hesitate there, you could lose it. For example, on low ground, it's very important. Sometimes you tank storm for this to stay ahead to prevent other people from dropping down in front of you and taking low ground from themselves, right? If you hesitate on that, it's over. So it's very important to like constantly stay ahead, constantly stay ahead, especially in a very stacked end game. Uh, that becomes even more important, okay? So really get this point. Okay? This is probably the most important tip in this video. Seriously, very important detail, okay? Because if you get this part right, I think you'll be a very good IGL, even if you ignore everything else. Although I do recommend learn all of these, right? So let's review very simply. Make it as easy as possible for your teammates to follow both physically and communicatively the choice of words and your tarp and your rotates in general actually understand the game right study the game make it an art where you learn every little detail and especially actually it's not about every you know small detail because if you learn everything some things don't matter as much as the others right so learn the stuff that matters uh watch pros because that's the best way to do it talk less and only put urgency in urgent situations and then this way the most important situations stand out this way because if you're constantly screaming and then you scream in my box it doesn't stand out as much it doesn't click make sense so really make sure that it clicks it stands out pre-planning make sure you tell your teammates what you're about to do before you actually do it so they're prepared so they know what to do and also like we're about to rotate is better than i'm rotating come Right, because if you do, I'm rotating, come and you run full speed ahead. There's a bigger gap between you and your teammate now. Whereas if you, you're holding Yeti, you're just waiting. And you say, "Are you ready? We're about to leave," and then he's like, "Okay, yeah," and then makes sense. Instead of doing, "I'm leaving," and then he reacts, and then there's a big gap that way. So just make sure your teammate's always with you that way, right? So what pre-planning does for you. So final tip, the most important one, is to be decisive and make sure you understand that it's not always about the best play, even though you have to try your best to get to that point. It's often about doing the subpar play with confidence and making sure that you're confident when you're doing it. And your execution often matters more than the plan itself. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.